This is Chaitali Bagh, Aviation and Defense University for Bureau, and I'm at 54th edition of Paris Asia 2023. I'm right now standing with John M. Goasta, who's the Vice President, International Defense and Space with Honeywell. Thank you so much, John. First day, very busy schedule, but still, you have agreed to give us the time. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you so much for being So, John, us. we begin with Honeywell's plans this year at Paris Air Show. Is there something new coming up, new plans, new announcements that Honeywell Defense is planning here? Yeah, thank you. We have a, a couple of announcements uh, focused on the defense side. Um, one with an OEM partner that has selected our engine and another uh, with a sustainment partner that's focused on uh, expanding our uh, RMU business, our moderniz modernization and upgrades uh, with C-130 fleets around the world. So yeah, very exciting show for us uh, and happy to have a great presence here at the Paris Air Show. Today, just being the first day, people have started coming right now. Now, um, John, we are expecting these announcements uh, within the Paris Air Show or you're going to just have the discussions right now and later on it will be... Uh, materializing. Yeah, for these two announcements, they will be formalized during the show. We'll have uh, sign signing ceremonies followed by press releases uh, with the customers uh, on site with us today. We'll be really looking forward to that. For defense, um, defense sector, defense um, uh, uh, aircraft, this, the sustainability, the lessing of CO2, it is happening a lot in the commercial aircrafts. What about the defense aircrafts? Is Honeywell doing something towards that? Yes, it's actually very important in the defense space as well. Um, so a lot of the technologies that we're developing on the commercial side of the business are very applicable to the defense side as well, especially around sustainable fuel, um, hydroelectric um, uh, propulsion. Uh, and then also uh, with our power generation and thermal cooling to support a lot of the, uh, uh, the, the new hybrid uh, power systems. So, so yeah, it's very applicable to, to both the uh, commercial and, and the defense space. Uh, and we do see uh, uh, operators with a lot of interest in, in adapting it, especially across Europe. Right. It is, it, it is very much in vogue in the commercial sector. But defense sector, we are seeing it's very slow right now. Yeah, I mean, I think with, you know, with, with the, the need right now to improve readiness of current vehicles, um, the uh, modernization and focus on sustainability has definitely slowed down a little bit, but, but I do believe that it is a very important part of the defense sector and, and will continue to, uh, to be a focus into the future. Um, but the short-term focus has been on uh, improving readiness around current platforms. Right. Right. Coming to the Indian market, it's booming in the defense sector, space sector. We are really coming up very fast. Yes. And last two years, a lot of companies are investing, trying to do a lot of partnerships with the Indian counterparts. So where, wh what is Honeywell doing and what, how is Honeywell looking into this? Yeah, so I, I would say a couple of areas. Number one, we have a very large engineering uh, footprint in India. Uh, and we continue to leverage that to develop products that, that are actually used globally, so not just uh, for the Indian market. Uh, we've also, over the last two years, signed quite a few agreements uh, with Indian manufacturers to provide systems uh, for platforms that are going to be uh, developed and manufactured in India. So uh, we are very uh, strong on partnering local, creating local content, um, and then doing kind of co-production slash license production uh, for those components uh, in India. So we have a very large footprint and it's continuing to grow. See, uh, John, from where you've just said, the co-production, the yes. co-production part. Uh, how do you see this, the, the pros and cons of this? Earlier it used to be the exchange of ideas or import. So yeah. how do you see this co-production idea? Yeah, how so it has been beneficial for you or yeah, the I th so I problems think that you have faced? Yeah, so I think it's very beneficial for both parties. I think when you when you just focus on localization just for the local content, um, it sub-optimizes the supply chain. But when you do a co-production where you're actually building something that can go global, it creates an economy of scale that's beneficial for both the, the partner, um, for the nation where, where it's creating the jobs, but then also for Honeywell because it creates a diversified supply base uh, for us that we otherwise wouldn't have. So, so I, I really see it as a, a win across the board and uh, we, we haven't had, uh, I would say, any major challenges that you wouldn't see with any other normal startup. But this, does this, does this co-production part, it parts way, it makes it easy with the defense uh, contracts and defense deals? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I would say, uh, you know, for a lot of the systems... So that that's very government-to-government, government, defense, ease and defense... Uh, yeah, things. yeah, but I would say, you know, for Honeywell systems, we're taking systems, you know, a lot of what we produce are, com are both commercial, they're, they're dual-use uh, yeah. systems. And so we have the ability to work on a, a B2B basis, um, not necessarily just G2G, um, to create uh, capability and to create partnerships that otherwise wouldn't exist. Um, but then those systems that were developed initially for commercial use um, have applicability on the defense side, and it's very easy to partner with uh, local on those. Great. So finally, John, after four years, Paris Air Show is happening, after COVID, in fact. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, this time it's much, much larger and bigger, as we can see. Yes, yeah. How about Honeywell? It, has it come like much bigger and larger and with the bank yeah, here? Yes, it has, absolutely. From 2019 so, to 2023? Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, you know, as you can see, we have a chalet. Yeah. Uh, all of our, uh, uh, you know, senior leadership is here, including our new uh, CEO and our new CEO president of Aero. Uh, so this is a very important show for us. We've come with uh, all of our senior executives, uh, you know, and it's real, we're here to engage with uh, our customers and partners around the world. So. Uh, great events and uh, looking forward to a great week. <laughs> great, John. So we are really looking forward to the signing ceremonies and the announcement that Hannibal Defense and Space has to announce. And maybe after that, we'll talk more about this because there will be a lot to disclose after yes. that. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much for Thank your time. You. Thanks.